Welcome back and joining us to put the day's market action into perspective is Caroline Krimen from Advice Works. Thank you so much for your time, Caroline. Some really sharp losses on the JSC today. Both the JSC and actually the RAND are down bad today. And I mean, this is particularly on the uh, equities market, something that we actually haven't seen in a while. We did see financials, mm -hmm. retailers, PGM stocks all under pressure. Uh, what's the pain all about? Is it all elections? So it's not only South Africa at this point. I mean, emerging markets are down, global markets are down. We saw the Far East down as we speak down. Now the U.S. is down. Mm. So I think from the elections, there's definitely an overhang, especially in the financial sector. You know, and well, the ANC is not going to get a majority. I think it's pretty clear at this point. But yeah. I, and I think people anticipated that, but I don't think they anticipated by how far they're actually going to fall from that fifty percent mark. And unfortunately, the coalition partners that they're going to have to take at this point, the EFF and or, or potentially MK, and neither of those are very palatable to investors at all. So mm. people markets are not liking that. So that's the first thing we'll have to see where that ends up on Monday. Then the part that actually has got nothing to do with us, it's got everything to do with the U.S. and the pace of interest rates. Mm. Um, you know, we, we've seen, you know, if this interest rate, are they going to decrease? When are they going to decrease? It's been a story on and off now for the past year. And it's now come back into focus. And it's come back into focus because, um, you know, we've seen one or two Fed officials really start to be, again, warn about inflation, that they really want inflation under control. One of the Fed officials came out, I think it was this morning, and he said they're looking at Q4 2024. Now, that is way later than, you know, the initial yeah. thing where we were going to get two rate cuts by, by, by May this year, which just haven't transpired. So there are worries, I think, about maybe in the US about stagflation potentially growing. I don't think it's that severe yet. Mm. But, you know, when you start to take interest rate decreases off the table and you push them into Q4, mm. it's also a bit worrying because that's just around about, about the time of the American election. Then you have to say, well, are oh, they going to yeah. decrease before the election or after the election? Because that's a very political move. Yeah. So then you start to say, well, is it maybe 2025? And mm. this doesn't, the market does not like that idea. Ah, at okay. All. So many things that markets aren't liking at this point. Uh, let's go into BHP and Anglo American. I'm not sure if markets like that or not, but of course, uh, that potential acquisition of Anglo by BHP now, uh, the last one valued at uh, $49 billion, dead for now. BHP did request for an extension. Anglo said no, and then BHP said, well, we're not making a firm offer. What have you made of that outcome? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's great for either of the company. I think I think uh, Billiton would really have um, benefited from you know acquiring Anglo's copper assets. Uh, that said, uh, they are a company. They're very very cautious about the deals they, they they put through. So and they can come back in six months. I mean, this is not necessarily mm. off the table. Maybe six months is is time for behind the scenes negotiations to take place. For Anglo. You know, the market obviously didn't like the fact that, you know, it drops, you know, people always like corporate actions of this mm -hmm. type. But I think it's actually potentially a good thing for Anglo because if they, now, they, now they've got time to put their money where their mouths are, yeah. you know, and, and really right size that company. And I've been a big proponent of the fact that this was a nice big shake up for them. You know, if mm -hmm. people are older and you will not remember this, you're far too young, when Nedbank tried to take over Standard Bank. You know, mm. that's a couple of decades ago. Yeah. And Sanderbank really got its act into gear. And I think that and this Anglo thing might actually be the same. Um, so mm. good, maybe, for them. But yeah. share price, not positive. Yeah, not yeah, <laughs> not positive at all. Um, mm. Something else that wasn't positive is the bottom line of Zeta. Although they did see double-digit revenue growth, that didn't quite filter through to the bottom line. We did see that growth disappearing uh, over yeah. there. But they did manage uh, to... Uh, uh, declare an inaugural uh, dividend yep. uh, since their listing. Talk to me about Zeta. Yes, I didn't think it was that bad actually looking at it. Um, so for Zeta, people don't know, they, they own Avis and Budget rent a car. So, you know, and, and what, what is actually quite nice about this is, you know, we're not in a great economic space at the moment locally. And, but we also are coming out of, you know, the COVID thing. People are starting to travel for business more. So car rental was up, leasing mm. was up. They're seeing demand in greater Africa. So I think considering the economic environment we're in, I don't think it was shabby, a shabby set of results. They're obviously feeling relatively confident about their, their outlook. So hence you get a dividend. So mm. I think don't judge them too harshly. I, I don't think it was that bad. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was the uh, trading statement 
or the general negative market sentiment, particularly on SA Inc. Woolies. Uh, Woolworths, of course, are releasing their full year trading uh, statement there. They didn't give us uh, exact mm -hmm. numbers, but they did say that uh, their bottom line will be at least 20% lower than the prior period. Uh, what do you make of that, particularly mm -hmm. also considering that in the prior period there was the inclusion of David Jones? <laughs> Yeah, so it's actually very interesting to me because, you know, they kind of say a lot of things that they've said in multiple sets of results leading up to this. And mm. that is that their food business does quite well, um, is doing quite well, but it's their women's apparel that's an issue. Now, it, it's almost like a carbon copy, and I can't remember which yeah. reporting period it actually was, where, well, we've got too much stock because winter, because the onset of winter was a bit late. So, yeah. you know, it's not going to look that good. So it's just like this. I feel like yeah. I've seen this story before. Before, yes. Um, so, yes, no, sure, we're in a bad economic environment, but 20% down. Yeah. I want to see those results because okay. I don't think that quite excuses them. Yeah, we'll definitely <laughs> see when they do. I think they said they are coming out in September, but of course they did say that yeah. they will release a further trading update with the exact numbers. Well, let's go into your stock pick for today. Caroline, what are you picking? It's controversial because you did mention it earlier, and it yeah. is Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce okay. is what has been named for, for driving the, the U.S. market down. Now, for people who don't know, Salesforce is a customer relations software company. It's one of the biggest in the world, competes with SAP. Now, I wouldn't have bought it before, but it has fallen 20% in a day. Yeah. Now, this is, is, is a very, very good company. It is extremely cash generative. It probably was a bit expensive. And I think what the market didn't like is that they were, the results were not that bad, but there was just a slight miss. And it's a company that has come out. It's now a more mature company. So it's not growing at 20 or 30%. You know, it's growing at 10%. And all the company wants is they say they want profitable growth. They're in a fantastic position to capitalize on artificial intelligence, you know, because mm -hmm. they have so much data from their customers and you're seeing this increasing digital transformation from customers. So I think people need to look through the shock and the horror and the 20% fall this year. Yeah. And actually it's a very good cash flash, cash generative companies and now's a really nice time. To buy some. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time there, Caroline, as you look for bargains uh, in the market. Uh, that was Caroline Kremen from AdviceWorks.